What's up traders, Matt from the Trade Brigade here doing a technical analysis on our broad market for the day. We'll cover SPY, the Qs, and IWM. On the left-hand side, as always, we've got the daily time frame, and on the right-hand side, the 30-minute intraday time frame. First one up on the chopping block, as always, is going to be our S&P 500. What's going on on the daily time frame? You can clearly see we have recaptured the 200 SMA bullish indication. We spent most, basically all of the day, actually, above the prior day's high, another bullish indication there as well. And we're now on one, two, three, four, five, six days of consecutive green activity, making a higher high and higher low. We call that one time framing. Uh, and generally speaking, you know, it's coming to the point where we would start to expect some sort of pullback. Now, it doesn't mean it has to pull back and do something like this. It doesn't mean it has to pull back and do something like this. But a couple more days of consolidation would be nice at this point in time to not feel like you're chasing it at these high prices. I mean, we got one day of balance, Monday is essentially, where the market did get some digestion. We talked about that yesterday. The back and forth activity didn't really seem like a stronger seller, and obviously we moved higher on today's session. A quick difference that I want to point out from this knee-jerk, well, not knee-jerk, but the reaction to the upside, you can see these really large 30-minute bars, right, printing to the upside. Notice what we got today, a little bit of rally out of the open, and then it was really balanced into the afternoon. So I'm not here to say that momentum has completely dried up, but it is starting to slow down just a little bit, as indicated by the smaller candles and spending more time balancing after an initial opening drive higher. The other thing you'll point out, or that I would point out, is the fact that we did print a final 30-minute bar that had a break of this area right here. This was a poor high on the market profile. We repaired that and then closed back down inside of the area of balance right here. So in the very, very short term, like this is something to maybe watch out for uh, on tomorrow's open, is if this is an area of balance, this is technically a look above and fail, right? And the target should be the bottom end of the balance here at 448. So depending on where we open up tomorrow morning, whatever happens with the futures overnight, we'll have to see. But that is one possible scenario here. If we open up underneath this area, 449.50 is what call it for round number's sake. As long as we're below that, look for possibly the rotation to the consolidation lows from today at 448. And again, that's just a simple scalp. It doesn't mean get bearish on the market. It's just a quick short trade for there. And then we would reevaluate. Does it look like we're going to hold? Does it look like we're going to bounce? So on and so forth. So what else can we learn? What else are the targets from the daily? So our bump in the road is going to come at uh, 452. We did make it to that psychological 450 area today, which I do think was a bit of a stronger hang up in the ES futures. That was 4,500. And that's kind of where we stalled out, right, and started getting this uh, sideways price action. So that could be a factor, but really the structural level is 452. That still remains in place. Obviously, pullbacks now want to hold this area right here, roughly 441. Uh, 444, still an important level, as noted by this prior high right here, but really it's all about this on the deeper, more aggressive pullback. If that holds, that will continue to build out the case for ideal bull flag consolidation. I don't really think that 429 is any longer in play for the higher low. Remember that in the weekly watch list video on Sunday, we were discussing the possibility that if 437 broke, maybe it's back down to here. Yeah, based on the two days we've already seen to the upside, I don't really think that 429 wants to come back into play in this upcoming week. Uh, and again, in, in terms of thinking about trend like we were in the Sunday video, I mean, where's our higher low going to form? Ideally, somewhere now above 437, right? A pullback that would look like this, clear higher low from there to there. I mean, we've made now a significant, significant high. We've taken out this set of lower highs. We've taken out this set of lower highs, and we've also taken out now this set of lower highs. So three sets all taken back in one move without a higher low pullback, we can definitely afford some sort of pullback in the marketplace. And again, the one I would be watching as of right now is this area right here around 441 to the downside in our S&P 500. Let's take a quick look with our Fibonacci's from the low, essentially all the way up to this recent high. And you can see that's still well above your 38.2. The 38.2 now is coinciding with that 337 level. So worst case scenario, do watch out for that one. But again, 441 is kind of the inter, uh, immediate level rather that I would pay attention to for like tomorrow or the Thursday session into the end of the week for something that would form this. So enough on the SPY. Let's get on over to the QQQ NASDAQ 100 tech sector. What do we have going on in the queues? Again, a day of balance, but right back to it, to the upside, forming a new higher high and a higher low. One time framing remains in effect. We now have a close above our daily 50 SMA, another bullish indication here. We're back above this pivot right here, 353. As we know, your hang up, the little bump in the road is 362, but ultimately the double talk target is still at 369. Just like in the SPY, we were discussing, you know, we're getting to the point where it's probably likely that we get some sort of pullback. It's not to say that it has to be a nasty one, but at this point in time, as long as we kind of hold Monday's low, which is 346, the whole dollar will
we'll call it just for round number's sake. Things do look fine here in the QQQ for a higher low. We now have the significant higher high. Remember that there was a slight difference between the SPY and the QQQ in the sense that, sure, the Qs did recapture this at first, right, on that Friday close, but it was kind of an equal high to this area right here. Well, yeah, now we've clearly closed above. We're even flirting with closing right at slightly above that area right here as well. So we can certainly afford the higher low pullback is what I'm getting at. And I don't want you to panic if we start to see some red in the marketplace. Think about the context of the overall move. Think about the trend that is starting to change here. I wouldn't panic over a day or two of red as long as the pullback seems healthy and isn't an all out free fall. Based on everything we've seen so far, I would not expect any revisit to this area here around 335. If anything, the higher low could happen above 340 on the sort of most aggressive bear case in my estimation for something that might build out a pennant like that. Okay, so very, very similar thinking to what we were just discussing in the SPY, but again, your levels to watch. 340, I don't think we're headed back to 335. 346, of course, Monday's low would be an ideal pullback area, something that does this. And obviously upside targets still remain at 369. Quick Fibonacci reading from high, or excuse me, from low to high. There we go. The 38.2 is well underneath the Monday low. So even if that cracks, it's not the end of the world from a Fib perspective. We would though want to see that 340 hold up as we were just pointing out from a structural perspective. On the 30 minute time frame, what else can we learn about the price action? I would say the same thing about momentum, not really dying out, but just slowing down a little bit. Again, there's your opening drive and then it's really sideways digestion into the afternoon. And that's not a bearish thing at all, by the way. Uh, it's actually quite bullish, right? We're getting price acceptance at these higher levels where two-sided trade is willing to take place. People are willing to transact up here. It's not one-sided. It's not like the buyers just disappeared. It seems that they're just taking a little bit of a breather. Same sort of idea with the look above and fail with these prior or not prior, but last two 30-minute bars closing as inverted hammers on a fake break of that sort of pennant here. So watch that. Uh, but again, is it is it an overwhelming short trade where you want to see the thing collapse? Probably not. If this falls out of the pennant to the downside, just look to move through the thin structure to the prior area of highs right here at 352, about a dollar underneath this level that we have in place. So let's just adjust that now together. We'll make this 352 to reflect the uh, what the chart is more, you know, uh, in, in recent terms, struggling for words, but you get the gist, right? So that's really the important level. Let's continue along and wrap up our broad market wrap app, wrap up. There we go. Our broad market with IWM Russell 2000 and the small caps. What do we have here? More of a consolidation day at the top of our range. We've been talking about this 208 for God knows how long this to me looks extremely bullish. The fact that we were able to get a little bit of a pullback here, uh, and then fire right back up towards the highs, just consolidation. Again, if the sellers were going to make a stronger stand, they would have capitalized on this momentum and closed it weak, likely under 204, but it obviously didn't happen. So to me, this consolidation that's forming here is bullish, right? The more time we can spend in this area building anticipation, as soon as that break of 208 comes, I mean, everybody and their sister is going to be able to see it. I do imagine people start to pile into small caps a little bit more on that bullish recapture of once again, not to beat the broken record, um, you know, the weekly bottom end of the range, right? It's just such an obvious level at this point in time, 208, if recaptured on solid momentum, again, everybody can see that level. I do imagine there's some follow through to the upside after a small period of bullish consolidation. So IWM looking good. If it does happen to crack 204 though, to the downside, not the end of the world. We do want to see it hold 201 though. Unlike everything we've seen so far, I do think that this could remain on the table if a stronger pullback does uh, develop across the marketplace. Whereas, you know, in the QQQ and the SPY, we were saying, okay, that first initial pullback level that we were talking about back in the Sunday video, that's not really in play. Well, yeah, it still is here in the IWM, just noting that 201 isn't too far away and it's just one level underneath. It would still be producing a nice significant higher low. We have the significant higher high above these prior highs. So things are good from a trend perspective, but just be aware that 201, the prior breakout point could be on the table on a break of 204. But for now, bullish consolidation. We talked about the fact that the sellers failed to materialize here on the 30 minute time frame. For now, just monitor your 208 and your 204, anything in between. Just look at it as chop, but bullish consolidation nonetheless at the top of this range and above this fake breakout point twice here, maybe even a third time right there as well. We're accepting above now 204. So that's all I've got for you in the broad market. Things certainly are continuing to look more bullish than bearish out there, but please be aware that pullbacks can come. Uh, don't panic if they do happen to come. It's just going to be a pullback in the context of this overall move based on what we're seeing so far. So that's going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it or learned anything new, let me know in the comments section or by giving the video a thumbs up. Don't forget our main channel is linked in the description. And all of that being said, I wish you a green trading week.